What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we've got a major Destiny 2 news update. And in this video, we're going to be covering some of the juiciest stuff for Season of the Deep. So initially, there are a few updates from Bungie which we'll talk about, and they're certainly worth knowing as we go into this season. But then we're going to talk about new exotic catalysts for Season 21. Plus we'll cover fishing. Yes, it is a thing, and exotic fish exist, which are actually able to reward exotic drops. So that's an interesting one. But additionally, we'll talk about secret weapons for this season, including an upcoming event weapon, some new exotic quest threads, and we'll cover new perks. There's also a spoiler section about the upcoming dungeon. I will give a spoiler warning for that, but we may have a hint as to what the exotic for the dungeon will be, as well as a quick preview of some of the gear. Plus there is the possibility that we're getting exotic shaders, and we've got a few other things to round up in the video. So quite a juicy one today, guys, and as always, I hope you enjoy it. If you do, a rating below very much helps us out on the channel. But without further delay, let's get into it. And so starting out right here, let's do some updates from Bungie. And the Destiny 2 team said, with the launch of Season 21, unclaimed vendor engrams will no longer be totally wiped when the new season launches. However, due to inventory limits of vendors, they will each only be able to hold up to 99 unclaimed engrams when a new season launches. So engrams do transfer over to new seasons, but if you have a massive stack of engrams, just bear in mind anything over 99 will be lost. On top of that, Bungie gave a couple of other updates, and they said the electric armor and amped up artifact mod names are switched, and the mods will still function correctly based on their descriptions. So there is a name mix-up right there. They also highlighted that players will need to have completed the unfinished business exotic quest in order to access the new quest and unlock strand aspects and a legendary weapon. We covered that one yesterday, and of course it unlocks the Apocal Integration hand cannon right here, which is a pretty cool looking thing at least. But they also said that the description for the Cenotaph Mask Exotic Warlock Head states that the priority target effect will activate when damaging a boss, but the effect also activates when damaging mini-bosses, vehicles, and champions. So keep all of those things in mind, and up next, let's get on to a couple of the other juicy items. And the weapon receiving an exotic catalyst this season is Malfeasance. That is in addition to the new season pass exotic, of course. And we can see here that the Malfeasance catalyst will grant Vorpal Weapon, which gives increased damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians with their super active as well as a 20-point range increase. So, not necessarily the flashiest catalyst, but certainly a functional one. And the catalyst is randomly acquired inside of the core playlist, so Crucible Strikes and Gambit will give a chance to drop this new catalyst. Good luck on the hunt for that one. And as we discovered yesterday, for Season of the Deep, a pretty big component, I guess, or at least one that Bungie have focused on quite a bit, is the introduction of fishing. So, after completing the initial steps for the Season Story quest, we do unlock a quest that specifically guides us through the beginning of the fishing process, if you like. It's not something I've actually spent a ton of time on just yet, but looking at triumphs, we can see that this is a relatively big component of the season. There are a lot of triumphs to catch all of the different fish, and there are plenty of them, as we can see, all of them with pretty interesting names, such as Gnawing Hungar, the Salvager Salmon, Deafening Whisker, and the Cuboid Cod. There are three fishing destinations, so we've got EDZ, Nessus, and the Throne World. And amongst those fish, when we are actually picking them up, there is a chance to get exotic fish. So there's the Whispering Moth Carp right here, as well as the Vexing Plesoderm, the Cyprian Axe Head, and the Ionian Alpha Beta. And for any fish we catch, we can redeem them or place them into the helm, and they give a variety of rewards. Interestingly though, the exotic fish, while RNG-based, can actually reward exotic drops as a gift, so you can get exotic armor pieces, things like that. I'm not sure if we can get the new exotic armor pieces that way, but nonetheless, a little bit of a prize for all that hard work fishing in Season of the Deep. Let us know your thoughts on that down below. Next though, a hidden weapon right here, and I guess a spoiler alert is necessary, but this will be the Solstice of Heroes weapon for the year. And in the database, we can simply see it as Solstice Rocket Launcher Zero Name, so, not the most well hidden of hidden weapons, I guess. And looking at it, it does appear to be a strand rocket launcher. We also get a preview right here of the model for it. This is just a 3D render of the geometry of it from the game files. So, this isn't the final version that we'll actually see in the game. But according to LightGG, it is a precision frame strand launcher. And for trait bonuses, in the first slot, it can roll ensemble, impulse amplifier, auto-loading holster, field prep, demolitionist, pugilist, or shot swap. With the second slot able to get Adrenaline Junkie, Hatchling, One for All, Envious Assassin, which is interesting, and then Chain Reaction, Swashbuckler, or Cluster Bomb. Give us your thoughts on those roles, 
Plus, it's listed with the basic origin trait Dreamwork, which is the Solstice trait, and once per reload, assists or assisted final blows partially refill the weapon from reserves, which potentially overflows the magazine. So that's going to be the Solstice weapon for this year, although we do have a couple of months until that event is due as far as I know. So let us know if that's one you'll be interested in this time around, but look into Ikora Ray very briefly right here. She has some new exotic quests, and these are mainly for returning players or free-to-play players, but there are three of the quests, one for Solar, one for Ark, and another for Void. And completing them will give different exotic drops as well as a potential weapon drop, so completing the Solar one can drop Syntheseps, Younger Hankara Spine, or Starfire Protocol, and that depends on which class you play in, so they are the class exotics, but it's also listed with the Crime Mutiny as a potential weapon reward. The Void quest, though, can drop a new weapon or a reprised one, should I say, and that's listed as the Positive Outlook Auto Rifle, which has been bought back this season, as well as Heart of Inmost Light, Graviton Forfeit and Controverse Hold. Then finally, the Arc Quest can drop the Combined Action Hand Cannon. That's another new one for this season. Then there are Doom Marchers, Sixth Coyote, and Crown of Tempests listed as well. No idea what the stat rolls will look like on those armor pieces. Maybe they'll be decent. But if you wanted a chance to pick up those weapons, I just thought it might be a useful heads up based on what the database is saying. So visit Ikora if you get a moment and you want to do those. A few interesting new perks for the season though, and there is Bipod, and this increases rocket launcher ammo and reserves, but reduces damage, blast radius, and reload speed. So that'll be featured on a couple of the new rocket launchers this season. Additionally, we get collective action, and collecting elemental pickups or throwing a strand tangle grants a stacking period of increased damage. And those pickups include fire sprites, void breaches, stasis shards, ionic traces, and tangles. Then there's control burst, and landing every shot in a burst grants the weapon increased damage and reduced charge time for a short duration. That's an interesting new fusion rifle bonus. But we have discord as well, and final blows with another weapon grant this one increased speed for aiming down sights, accuracy, and airborne effectiveness for a short time. Then when discord is active, final blows will refund ammo. Plus there's edgy current, and this temporarily increases reload speed after sprinting, and the effect is improved when you're amplified. We also have invisible hand, and repeatedly missing targets increases the weapon's stability for a short time, and the buff lasts for a short duration after targets are hit. But finally there is weft cutter, and dealing sustained damage severs the target. So a few interesting new perks right there that we can pick up on some of the weapons from this season. And let us know any good weapons or roles that you've picked up so far in Season of the Deep down below. Finally here though, a bit of a spoiler alert is necessary, and the game post and Destiny Bulletin shared a little bit of information about the upcoming dungeon and some of the rewards. Separately to what they've posted though, in the collections, interestingly, under weapon ornaments and scout rifles, there is a classified exotic scout rifle ornament. But on top of that, on Light GG, we can see an exotic trait here called Protective Weave, and firing this weapon at an ally grants woven mail to both the user and the target. So it's possible right there that that could be a new scout rifle for the dungeon with that bonus. But going back to what Destiny Bulletin shared, you can see a bunch of icons right here, for emblems, a new title, and a badge for the dungeon, as well as new armor pieces. And immediately I'm getting very Crota's End style vibes from this. And according to them, weapons-wise from the dungeon, we'll be able to pick up a Stasis Waveframe Breach Grenade Launcher, as well as a Solar Rapid Fire Glaive, a Solar Aggressive SMG, and a Stasis Aggressive Rocket Launcher. Apparently those will come with the Restoration Ritual Origin trait, and reviving alloys or killing enemies with the finisher reloads the weapon and readies an emergency reload for the next time the weapon runs out of ammo. So just a juicy hint right there at what some of the dungeon stuff could look like, and potentially it'll be pretty good. Let us know if you'll be diving into that dungeon when it drops on the daily reset on Friday this week. And the final thing to mention very quickly here, but JP Deathblade shared an interesting Eververse image, and it shows three exotic weapons with what appear to be shaders that match them. So players are speculating, could we be getting shaders that can be applied to exotic weapons potentially? And that certainly seems possible. The only thing I will say though, looking in the database, we can see some of the ornaments for weapons this season, and there is one for Sunshot called Vexplosion. And looking at the preview for that, it pretty much appears identical to what we can see in the Eververse image. So while these could be shaders that apply to exotic weapons, I think it's also possible that they are shaders based on those exotic weapon ornaments so that you can match the rest of your gear with the ornament itself. That would be my guess based on what I'm seeing, but either is a possibility, so I guess we'll simply find out. 
Exotic shaders, though, finally would be a really cool thing to add to the game. It's just the case that there is nothing significant to suggest that's happening right now. For today, though, guys, that's what we have to round up. So an interesting look at new catalysts, hidden weapons, dungeon teasers, quests, and of course, exotic fish which potentially I think is the pinnacle of weirdness for a Destiny season release, but hey, it just might be something useful to spend that time doing. Let's hope that exotic fish RNG isn't too harsh. And so let us know what you think down below in the comment section, guys. And for today, if you've enjoyed the video, a rating below very much helps us out on the channel. Also, be sure to get subscribed and I'll keep you posted with a lot more Destiny content in the coming days. But otherwise, for now, I appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope you all have an awesome day.